This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening and welcome to our viewers in the West on a very busy Monday night. It's been a day of stunning developments, starting with the abrupt announcement by the number two official at the FBI. Deputy Director Andrew McCabe is out, stepping down after months of public attacks on him by the President of the United States. And then there's this, NBC News exclusive details about a phone call between President Trump and McCabe in which the President berated McCabe and included a personal swipe at his wife. All of it coming as the mystery swirls over a secret memo which House Republicans say reveals potential abuses during an early stage of the Russia investigation. Democrats say it's deeply misleading. We have it all covered starting with our justice correspondent Pete Williams. Friends and co-workers tonight tell NBC News two factors are behind Andrew McCabe's abrupt move to step down as deputy director. First, wariness at steady criticism from President Trump. NBC News has learned those tensions flared the night the president fired James Comey, who was out of town. He watched Comey return to Washington on a government plane. The president called, fuming that Comey would be allowed to take this plane home after being fired. Then he suggested to McCabe that he ask his wife how it feels to be a loser and hung up. He was talking about McCabe's wife, Jill, who ran for Virginia State Senate as a Democrat and accepted a nearly $500,000 contribution from a PAC run by Virginia's governor, a close friend of Hillary Clinton's. After his wife lost, McCabe became deputy FBI director and played a role in the Clinton email investigation. No wonder they found nothing wrong. How does that look? How does that look? So dishonest. That was followed by frequent attacks on Twitter from the president as recently as December. But friends say perhaps the biggest reason for McCabe's leaving now is that the Justice Department's inspector general will soon issue a report expected to strongly criticize how the FBI handled the Clinton email investigation, including his role. A McCabe legal advisor and an FBI agent working on the email case exchanged hundreds of text messages, often harshly critical of Trump, calling him loathsome and an idiot. McCabe became acting FBI director after the firing of James Comey and was widely praised for saying the Russia investigation would not be derailed. Quite simply put, sir, you cannot stop the men and women of the FBI from doing the right thing. McCabe's departure means Christopher Wray now has his own team in place, but several officials insist Andrew McCabe left on his own. Pete Williams, NBC News, Washington. This is Peter Alexander at the White House. Tonight, the mystery over a secret Republican memo, the latest partisan flashpoint. So what's in the memo? Only a few lawmakers know for sure. Transparency is a good thing. Sunlight's a good thing. Let's let the American people see. Republicans say the memo, compiled by House Intelligence Committee head Devin Nunes and his staff, details alleged abuses by the FBI and Justice Department, that the agencies acted inappropriately when requesting surveillance warrants for members of the president's campaign team. Evidence Republicans say the Russia investigation was tainted from the start. But Democrats are dismissing the document, one calling it a brainwashing memo that picks and chooses its facts. This document they put together is, is false, misleading, misrepresenting. Why does the memo matter? It's another effort to discredit the Russia inquiry, just as special counsel Robert Mueller is eyeing an interview with President Trump. The New York Times reports the document shows Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, the man overseeing Mueller's investigation, approved an application last year to extend surveillance of a former Trump campaign aide, according to three people familiar with the memo. Mr. Rosenstein! Rosenstein tonight ignoring questions. Asked whether the president has confidence in Rosenstein, the White House deflecting. When the president no longer has confidence in someone, they'll know. FBI agents fear the mysterious memos already damaging the public's trust. What we're seeing here is politicization, weaponization of a classified memo that, the own, that, that our own Department of Justice has said would be extraordinarily reckless to release. The House Intelligence Committee's top Democrat says late tonight Republicans voted to release that GOP memo, but that they blocked the release of a counter memo put together by the Democrats. The White House says President Trump hasn't seen the memo, but he now has five days to review it before deciding whether Americans should be able to see it for themselves. Lester. Peter Alexander at the White House tonight. Thank you. And all of this coming as President Trump prepares to deliver his first State of the Union address to Congress. Our live network coverage begins tomorrow night at 9 Eastern Time, 6 Pacific, here on NBC.
Now to the deadly flu emergency sweeping the country and an urgent plea from doctors. Get your flu shot. It's not too late. It's worth it, they say. And also getting the vaccine will not make you sick. There's increasingly high demand for the vaccine at pharmacies. And while some are reporting a shortage, the CDC says there is enough supply to go around. We get the latest now from NBC's Gabe Gutierrez. Near Indianapolis, 37-year-old Carly Slavin died just three days after being diagnosed with the flu. Things just went downhill so fast. Even though her kids had gotten a flu shot, she had not. We were all there holding her when she died. In San Jose, California, Maria Paniagua also didn't have the vaccine. When she fell critically ill, she lost her unborn baby. The CDC reports two-thirds of pregnant women have not gotten a flu shot, but the message is spreading. Over the weekend, lines stretched out the door in Connecticut for free or low-cost vaccines. I thought now was the time to be a little more proactive. <coughs> Nationwide, the CDC says there is enough supply, but the skyrocketing demand has prompted some urgent care centers to scramble. Typically, during this time in January, you'll see that health care organizations are returning unused flu vaccines. And for us to be on our third order just speaks to the demand. Doctors say it's a myth that the shot itself will give you the flu. When you get the flu shot, you might actually feel a little under the weather. Body aches, low-grade fevers, arm soreness, that's because your immune system starting to get activated to fight the flu. Carl Igg can't help but wonder if getting the vaccine might have saved his daughter. This is not just a news report where somebody else died of the flu. There's a whole family, little kids, that there is no normal for them. It's the only thing that we can do for her now is to uh, tell people and it's not too late. It might save you. Perhaps because people are starting to listen to that message, pharmacies like this one are telling us of extremely high demand for this year's flu shot. And as a reminder, the CDC says it takes about two weeks to kick in. And even if you do end up getting the flu, the symptoms won't be as severe. Lester. Yeah, a powerful and important message tonight. All right, thanks very much, Gabe. Tonight, tax season is officially underway. I know just hearing those words is enough to make you groan, but it's important to know why security experts are urging you to file as soon as possible before thieves try to steal your refund. NBC's Tom Costello has that warning now and how to protect yourself. These are the letters that my parents received from the IRS. For nine months, Julianne McLaughlin tried to set the record straight with the IRS after cyber criminals stole her elderly parents' identities and filed for a $1,900 tax refund before they could. Their social security number is both of theirs are floating around out there. And these are two very elderly people who really are, have no ability to sort of protect themselves. Tax-related scams jumped 400% last year. Now the IRS is cautioning it could be worse this year. After 145 million Americans' personal information was lost after last year's Equifax hack alone. This potentially could be somebody's identity now involved in a tax scheme. Exactly. And so they create fake tax returns. Itai Mayor at the IBM Cyber Command Center took us into the dark web where already prepared fraudulent tax documents sell for 40 to $60 each. They, they try to file the tax returns before you so they can collect on your money before you can. The advice? Establish a six-digit PIN with the IRS to ensure your data is safe. And beware of emails or phone calls from the IRS. They're almost always fake. So one of the big things you can do is file early, because once you're filed, it's going to be nearly impossible for them to submit a fraudulent claim. This year, it's a race to file your return before cyber thieves can. Tom Costello, NBC News, Boston. There are troubling new revelations about the technology millions of Americans use to help stay fit. Could the same kind of app you use to track your runs, walks, or bike rides end up compromising the safety of America's troops? Let's get more on this from NBC News Pentagon correspondent Hans Nichols. Zoom into some war zones and a fun workout heat map that uses GPS technology to track where athletes use fitness devices becomes a potentially dangerous roadmap to U.S. military bases. Today, the Pentagon announcing it will review guidelines for the use of all wireless and technological devices on military facilities. After the Washington Post reported that a curious 20-year-old student discovered they could reveal the locations of U.S. soldiers or spies. In certain areas, you can see a regular place where someone starts and stops their runs, and that's often their house. 
In Afghanistan, the roads of the Kandahar airfield lit up by soldiers walking and running routes. In a statement, Strava, the company behind the technology, says, We take the safety of our communities seriously and are committed to working with military and government officials to address sensitive areas that might appear. But the heat map may cause anyone who uses GPS technology, not just those in uniform, to question who is monitoring their workout habits or even their daily routines. In the age of connected devices, uh, we have much greater vulnerabilities uh, than we realize. And then ironically, the most advanced militaries in the world may be the most vulnerable. Here at the Pentagon, military personnel, as well as reporters, are required to take off Fitbits and put smartphones into special boxes outside certain classified rooms. But that heat map clearly eliminates a path to the bike racks, which are just outside the gym. Hans Nichols, NBC News, the Pentagon. A major change announced today by Major League Baseball. After decades on the diamond, the Cleveland Indians are dropping their logo, which has become one of the most controversial images in sports. We get the story from NBC's Kevin Tibbles. While the team has been called the Indians for more than a century, Cleveland baseball is parting ways with its logo, Chief Wahoo. I honestly never thought it was going to change. The Chief, a uniform mainstay since the late 1940s, has in recent years become the target of controversy. Many saying the logo is racist. This is time for it to be gone. The team will no longer wear the logo or display it on signs or banners beginning in 2019, when Cleveland hosts the All-Star Game. Commissioner Rob Manfred in a statement said, Major League Baseball is committed to building a culture of diversity and inclusion throughout the game. Racism is a tradition, and it's been a tradition in this country for a long time. It's about time that tradition end. While Native American nicknames or mascots have been removed from many college teams, some remain in pro sports. Debate continues over the Washington Redskins name in the NFL. The Atlanta Braves changed their logo years ago. Coincidence or not, the Indians have not won the World Series since 1948. About the same time, Chief Wahoo adorned their uniforms. Kevin Tibbles, NBC News. More to come tonight. Still ahead, falling apart. The danger you may be driving over or under every day. The new warning about tens of thousands of bridges all across the country. We're back now with a dire new warning about America's bridges. Tens of thousands of them are in such disrepair, they're literally falling apart, putting us all at risk. A report out today reveals disturbing details about how dangerous the situation really is. NBC News national investigative correspondent Jeff Rossin shows us in tonight's Rossin Reports. Across the country, bridges crumbling, even collapsing. In Utah, the driver of this car could have been killed when this piece of a bridge smashed through his windshield. Another six or eight inches, he might not have been talking to me today. In fact, there are dangerous new cases from Florida to Georgia to Michigan. And tonight, this new report from a road builders association showing just how bad it is. According to government data, 54,259 bridges deemed structurally deficient. Americans driving on them 174 million times a day. So many bridges in need of repair, if placed end to end, they'd stretch nearly the distance between New York City and Miami. It really comes down to a failure of leadership in Congress to address some of these issues and provide additional funding. Officials have been sounding the alarm for years. In 2016, I visited this bridge in Washington, D.C. Look at this right up here. This is the roadway and there's metal literally peeling right off of it. Look at this flange right here, paper thin. This is all that's left. This is what's holding up the this roadway. Is, this beam is holding the bridge up. And this bridge is on the list again this year. The repairs still haven't been made. This is the support for the entire bridge, just completely rusting away. Look at this, Jeff, completely gone. You can put your hand right yeah, through that. All of this, just rusting from the inside out. Late today, federal transportation officials telling NBC News this new report just underscores the need for investment in our nation's infrastructure. Jeff Rawson, NBC News, Washington. Coming up here tonight, whoops, why tickets to tomorrow night's State of the Union have to be reprinted. Hiccup on the way to tomorrow night's State of the Union address. Perhaps Senator Marco Rubio illustrated the point best when he tweeted, looking forward to tomorrow's State of the Union. 
That's right, Yun Yum with an M, a typo on some of the tickets from the Sergeant at Arms office, which are now being reprinted and will be ready to go for the invited guests. We appreciate you spending part of your evening with us. That is nightly news for this Monday night. I'm Lester Holt. For all of us at NBC News, thank you for watching and good night.